Welcome to the Greyhawk DJC podcast. Today we talk with Matt Erickson, owner of Treka Logistics, a third party logistics company based in Grapevine, Texas. We hope you enjoy the podcast. <laughs> Welcome to the podcast, Matt. Thank you. Thank you for having me. How are you feeling? Uh, I'm feeling great. Uh, I'm feeling. This feels good to have you guys here and. Uh, Welcome, welcome to Trekka Logistics. This Thank is you for coming. awesome, man. Thank, Thank you for you. having us. This Thank is, you. I'm so like happy for you. And I want to say, it's weird, like, I'm so proud of you. Like, this is, <laughs> this is so cool, man. Well, thank you. So before we get started, let's tell us where you're from, your background. Sure, you know, sure, sure. All about you. So uh, I guess if you ask my mom, uh, this all started in first grade, second grade, maybe. Apparently, I wrote a book for a class that I was going to work at the airport one day, right? Uh-huh. So, uh, you know, um, when I was, I grew up in Indiana, um, Northeast Indiana, and uh, I was working with a, an air freight company up there, uh, mm-hmm. working at night, going to school during the day. Um, and I got an option or opportunity to come down here to Dallas uh, and work in the ops department. So when I was 20 years old, I moved to Dallas and uh, I, I worked in air freight for many years, and then I moved on to um, routed tri-state and, and by the end domestic routed courier work. Did you know anybody when you came? No. Just by yourself? It was, no. I, uh, that was pretty surreal, to be honest with you. Because um, <clears throat> that's I where can, this whole entrepreneur thing starts. This right? is, this is that, where it all starts. Yeah. You know, I, I, it probably goes back to fourth grade. Uh, <clears throat> growing up, you know, my I, when the Nerf bow and arrow came out, I might be dating myself, right? But when that was the coolest thing ever, right? That Nerf bow and arrow, you got to have it. Uh, that came out, and I remember I wanted that Nerf bow and arrow, and I told my parents I want that Nerf bow and arrow, and they said, well, better get a job and put it on layaway. And uh, two weeks later, I had a paper route. So um, that's what I did, and, and uh, it seems like it kicked off from there. Um, all throughout school, Uh, It evolved from one paper route to two and Mm -hmm. then uh, refereeing soccer on the weekends, uh, tournaments, and then getting into high school, you know, um, you got to have the cool job at the video store, right? And and, and do your your thing there. You're you're dating yourself right now. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, yeah, there we go. Uh, Definitely dating myself. Uh, You know, but it's always been a part of me, I guess, really. Um, You know, whether it's... uh, a dream of something there have been you know I haven't really like skipped around jobs in my career I've Mm -hmm. been at the same place for four or five years then here for four or five years here for eight um, which really enables me to learn a lot of the aspect of that you know um, air freight is much different than routed courier work and distribution for Staples and Amazon and, and all of that. And then you move into the customer side of it and building the 3PL on a global network. You know, small parcel shipping is not container shipping. And so um, I was really able to dig into all of those different aspects. And whenever I moved on from a job, I had this thought of, oh, well, maybe I want to Maybe I'll start my own courier company. Like, I understand this aspect, but it just didn't feel right. Uh, And then after that, I'm like, okay, well, maybe I start, uh, we add on to that. We're going to be a logistics company, right? It just didn't feel right. And so. So did you like what you were doing? Because it's not something that people really get geeked up about. But Um, you seem to be like very, you know, passionate about this. I I, I am passionate about logistics. Yes. Um, Not to downplay it, but, you know. If I was sitting in, uh, if I was sitting in the office dispatching truckloads all day long, I would not be passionate about it. Um, to me, logistics is just—it's a puzzle. It's a Rubik's cube, you know. Okay. Um, Treka Logistics is—I is, uh, don't know if you know this or not, but like the Treka Logistics is, is based upon the ancient Frisian like base word for trek. Okay. Um, and so, I feel that logistics from you know quite frankly, from supplier and manufacturer all the way to the end user, it's a trek. There's mountains, there's valleys, there's going to be, sometimes it flows right on through without issues, right? Um, But then all of a sudden you come up against a 14,000 foot mountain and you're like, how do I get over that? Well, you you gotta figure it out, that's that's what it is. So to me, logistics is more than just shipping this package or moving this truck here. Um, You know, logistics is, I guess at its definition, the movement of ideas and people and, and, and uh, goods, commodities. But when it really comes down to it, it's all a puzzle and it all interacts differently. And that's what I get excited about is I look at it and say, you know, um, 
what have we done to provide a logistic solution to impact somebody's life today? Whether that's, you know, this guy that lives over in Hong Kong that ordered the bracelet and it's, and it's you know, next day air because he's so excited to receive it for a birthday party and we got it out, you know, rush order, got to him on time, whether it's, uh, you know, I think I told you about the, the cross dock guys that call on a Saturday and say, can you receive these pallets and deliver 3 a.m. to a, a surgery center? Yeah, sure, that's, that's what we can do. So to me, it, it, we, we don't fit ourselves into just one little box you know okay. we do cross dock we do fulfillment we do kidding we do um you know honestly when people started asking me what do you do what do you do what do you do i could go on for hours about what we do depending on what the customer is and so um i really look at it and say you know we're we're a, we're a logistics and solutions consulting company mm -hmm. that has the operation to back it up that that's that's really kind of what it nice. comes down to is just uh uh, you know, wh whatever it may be, you know, I think I, I mentioned our first client that came here, walked in our door and said, hey, you know, I've got this stuff on the water and I want to sell on Amazon. I want to sell on my website. Can you help me? What are your plans for this? What, well, I was hoping you could help me with that. Fantastic. Welcome aboard, you know, because we get to look at how we impact her life and her business and, and, and all of that, which, you know, it, it's all about, uh, Life is about reactions. It's about impacts and reactions, quite frankly. And not to get too deep on that, but you know, um, you, you never know how what you're doing here impacts the end user. You know, we have we have <clears throat> for our customers, we have direct Shopify API links into our WMS, and so um, sometimes these gift notes pop up, and and you look at them, and uh, somebody that you might look at and say, well, they're they're just sending this to, from here to here that gift message and that package has emotion attached to it, right? And so you are impacting that person's life by doing what you promised to the customer and getting the product out on time, shipping it the way that, you know, pack packaging it so that when the customer receives it, they're excited to open it. You know, it, it's all of that. It's looking at how we impact people's lives, you know, employees. How do we impact the employee's life? You know, Nobody ever, nobody ever loves coming to work every single day, right? But if you hate coming to work every day, there's a, there, there's, there's a core problem there, you know? And you can right. still be extremely productive and extremely um, agile and extremely supportive and be happy, like in your workplace. You can go home at the end of the day and know that I put in a good shift today and I was rewarded not by a paycheck because I earned that, but I was rewarded by... Uh, the culture and, and a culture that not only I'm walking into, but a culture I'm helping create by being part of that. And as a team, we get through all of this. So you when know? you're here in Dallas by yourself, mm -hmm. are you formulating all these ideas in the back of your mind? Are you like, where did that come from? You know, oh, geez. I, it's always been there. I, I, I really couldn't tell you where it, um, you know, I, I, there's been this, uh, I, I was a, I was a classical pianist growing up, and so uh, I I have this little plaque that you know back in fourth and fifth and sixth grade, etc. When I was doing piano competitions and everything, that um, and it says it just says learn all there is to learn and then choose your own path, and that that rock that plaque has followed me to Dallas through all the apartments through like it's still in fact it's it's in there in the office oh, <laughs> quite wow. frankly yeah. and it's something that for some reason has always just been there and I didn't really realize that by reading that every single day it had become kind of a, a, a mantra you know mm -hmm. to continue educating myself continue learning nobody's ever going to learn all there is to learn but you can make enough you can learn enough to make a decision and, right. and I think that's really what I've what I, what, what's kind of driven me is to be able to learn enough to be able to have the freedom to make my own decisions. And, and, and as a business owner, that's the essence of making your own decisions. So you the knew freedom of doing that. You'd be here one day, right? I didn't know. You didn't know? No, okay. I, I, I dreamed for a long time. Okay. Um, I, I, uh, the last year has been, the last year has been, uh, So a year it's ago, it's been an evolution of growth. A year ago, well, yeah, yeah, you would have never thought about this. Like oh, two a year years ago. no, a year ago, I would have dreamed about this. Right, but you know, the reality is, to quit a well-paying, solid 
job and mm-hmm. career in the middle of a pandemic okay. and then say, I'm gonna go in, all in on myself and invest in myself. Um, that's scary as shit, uh, you know. Can I, sorry. Oh, you can say whatever you want. <laughs> Keep going, uh, this, is a, this is awesome. I, yeah. I uh, you know, uh, I mean, I, I'll tell you the story of how it evolved, right. essentially. Because like, there's gotta be so a spark somewhere, right? There, yeah. there, there was a spark, yeah. yes. Um, when it came down to it, I, I left a job that I had been at for a long time, mm-hmm. a year ago. Um, and I didn't have any plans. Uh, it was, I need to determine, um, I, I need to determine where I want to be, um, to where I, uh, how do I put this? Uh, I need to be in a place that I agree with and that is a, 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 a like, not only like it can be rewarding as a career but again if the culture is not there if these things are not there Mm -hmm. and that doesn't mean that it's a that doesn't mean that that's a bad culture that doesn't mean that this person is bad that just means that it's not a good fit you know some people some people might walk into trek of logistics and be like this culture sucks right that's the reality i mean um (laughs) i had a guy i had a guy come in here three weeks ago we were doing a we were doing a sort of uh 14 pallets of iPhone boxes, accessories, and um, we had them on an assembly line, and I had people out here at four different stations working it. Uh, after about 30 minutes, the supervisor comes in and says, hey, this, this guy wants to, talk to, uh, to, wants to talk to the big boss, and I'm like, okay, like, you know, what's, so come on, he's like, hey, man, like, if it's going to be detailed like this, this isn't for me. It's like, detailed. Uh, you're, you're lifting this up, and, but, but you know what? I appreciate the fact that you recognize this isn't the place for you. It isn't the culture for you. You're not going to waste your time. You're not going to waste my time and money. It's all good. Like right. so. So to say that a culture is is not the right one. That's that's you know everybody has their own perception and their own perspective. But for me, it wasn't the correct culture anymore. I didn't okay. I didn't I didn't agree with it, and I decided it was time for me to move on. Uh, so I left, and so right when you left, the moment you realized. I don't have that job anymore. Yep. What's that feeling like? Were you scared? Was it exhilarating? Was it everything? It was uh, immediately. Uh-huh. It, it, I don't think it really set in, honestly. Okay. Um, you know, when you're someplace for so long, it becomes a part of who you are, right. right? And you don't just change who you are overnight. That takes that takes time, and 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 really and really understanding who you are. You know, you. Um, Again, not to get all philosophical, but you know, you, you come to a point and realize, is this who I really am or is it not who I am? And if that's not who you are, you either decide, okay, I'm going to stay here and accept the fact that this is not who I am, but for X, Y, and Z, I'm going to stay here, or you make the decision to say that's not who I am and I'm moving on. And, right. and that's what I did. And, and, but you know, that, that place had become a part of my life. Uh, the people, you know, uh, just everything about it for, a very long time. So, um, at first it wasn't, you know, I, 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 I left and I sent out text messages to key cause nobody really knew. I, I didn't want to make a big deal. I didn't want to cause a disruption. I didn't want to be a big deal. I, I didn't want it to be like that. It was just a, this is, it's time for this to be done. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, time for the time, time to move on. Um, so, you know, I sent out to text to key like people that said, Hey, you know, I'm no longer with this place. Uh, here's your contacts, et cetera, et cetera. And like three of them replied back to me, uh, please tell me you left to start your own business. And I'm like, I'm not even, not even thinking about that right now, you know? Okay. So I, I, you know what I did honestly for that first, that first month after I left, um, I built a gazebo in the backyard. <laughs> I've always wanted to build a gazebo. And I was like, you know what? I'm not a handy guy, but I've got nothing but time on my hands. I got no commitments. I got nothing but time on my hands. Uh, screw it. Let's do this. Right. And, uh, it took me four days and there was, there was, you know, there was probably some cussing and some throwing of boards across, make sure, you know, et cetera. But in the end I built that gazebo that I wanted to enjoy, you know, the, 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 or by the pool, by the back patio. Uh, I did projects like that. And I, and I, all the things that had built up that as you just go through life and you're like, Oh, I want to do that. I want to do that. I want to do that. And every day it just becomes that thing that you see that you want to do. I decided I'm going to do those things. I'm going to, I'm going to start getting those things, you know, right. off my, off my chest. And so I did that. And every time, um, 
every time I felt like I kind of got to a point where I was like, you know, uh, there's been a lot of change, a lot of movement. This happened about once a month, uh, once a month max. I would uh, jump in the car, um, throw all my gear in the back and drive to Colorado and uh, camp at the base of a 14er and the next day go summit that bad boy. And um, if I'm lucky, I made it to the top. The first one I didn't. Uh, I went back two months later and, and got to the top of that one uh, and, and, and finished it. But, uh, you know, for me, it was, it was a process of just kind of that has become so much of your life that you have to de deprogram from right. it almost, you know? And then once you're deprogrammed from it, you are who you are and you can make those decisions to say, how do I want to live my life? How do I want to, I mean, the, honestly, the day that I left that job, I had a phone call like that afternoon saying, Hey, can you, like, we heard you left. Can you come, can you come interview for this position? And, and, and it was, and it was just a, like, it's too soon. It's too raw. It's, you know, it, this is not, uh, no, everybody go away. Let <laughs> me figure out what I want to do. Right. right <laughs> just right. go away. So, um, so that's what I did for a while. And then, um, I just, I lived my best life and did a lot of trail running, um, and, and a lot of time outdoors. I, I think I made five trips to Colorado over the summer. Um, four of them to go climb 14ers, um, uh, no, four to Colorado, one to New Mexico, uh, nice. Northern New Mexico, Santa Fe area is beautiful. Um, took my son one time, we went whitewater rafting, um, just got a, got a, you know, Furbo cabin and for two days and went whitewater rafting and. To me, it was always a, uh, I've sorted out a whole lot of stuff. Now I need to go, I need to go climb this mountain. And as I climb that mountain, I'm going to, put, there's going to be times where my body's going to say, turn around. My mind's going to say, turn around. My mind's going to say, turn around again, dude, you're here alone. Who cares? Like you don't, you can lie and say that you summited. You don't even, you know, no, there's going to be those times and that's what makes us who we are is like pushing through that and saying, I don't, you know, there's going to be those times where you're like at 13, five and you can barely breathe and you're like, okay, 600 more vertical feet to go. And, uh, two dudes come running by the they're trail <laughs> running to the top and you're like, what's going on, man? So, uh, but again, it's all, it's all, you know, look, I'm driving here from Dallas and then I'm hitting it the next day. So, but to me, it was a process. Mm -hmm. And as you, as you summit and you work your way up that mountain and you deal with whatever it is, the ridges, the, you know, the valleys, the peaks and the highs, you are working all of that stuff out and shedding all of that. And for me, the most peaceful place in the world is the peak of a mountain. Um, because you is that why you have the symbol complete solitude your, your, yes your logo is a mountain right yes awesome. um yeah. complete solitude you know you because to me on the way up some people some people will do yoga for 60 you know for 60 money minutes and that's what gets them to that place and and um everybody has their thing for me i you know um when i'm in a place where i'm like okay i need to i need to make some life decisions or i just i need to sort them th some things out mm -hmm. um I sorted out on the mountain and uh, at the top is where you say, okay, I, I, I've shed all of that static, all of that, all of that. And when you come back down, the only thing that comes back into your mind, into your psyche, into your emotions is what you allow it. Not all the stuff that's built up for a month from all the external traffic, you know, friends, family, job, none of that shit comes back in unless you allow it to. So right. for me, it's that, you know, it's that trip up. And then as I come back down, I come back down focused and re refocused on uh, what the next steps are strategically. Trajectory. So how, how did your family act, react when you quit? Like they gave you, it they looks were like they gave you time and, and support. They were supportive. Right? Yes. Okay. Because uh, we hear a lot of entrepreneurs, one of the biggest hurdles is having to deal with family members who are worried about them, right? They're concerned. They're concerned. Uh, I would lie if I would, if I would say there wasn't any of that. Yes. Right. Um, you know, but they, they're, 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 they're supportive. Uh, they, okay. they know that this has always been, this has always been the dream really. Mm -hmm. And, um, when it came down to it this, this last summer, uh, when I, you know, I interviewed at three different places multiple times and everyone, I was like, just not feeling it just not feeling it, just right. not feeling it. And 
that's when I realized that my life had evolved to instead of having a reason not to start a business because I had more to learn or I had I was looking at it from the aspect of if I if I take this job how is that going to prepare me for starting Treco Logistics is it mm-hmm. going to prepare me more and if it's not then why am I taking that job right. um, am I taking it because that's what I want to do or am I taking that because I'm scared to step out and do Trekker Logistics. Because, like, to get back to your previous question, um, no, it's, it's, it's scary as shit doing this. You know, stepping out right. there, there is no, there's no fallback. There's no, when it comes down to it, if something happens, you are it, right? right. That's, you know, right. uh, you run out of money, uh, too many packages that day. Too, there is no, you know, you can go and work for somebody else and, um, and say, you know, uh, that, well, if this doesn't get done, we work as a team. And so maybe they'll kind of pick up this or this could, you know, and, and there isn't any of that. You know, if, if, if it doesn't get done, you have nobody to blame but yourself. Right. And if you invest your entire life savings into something and you make one at the, at the time feels like the right decision and then in hindsight is a bad decision, that can put you under, you know, or force you to make decisions to where it's no longer just your business or just right. your, um, and so it, it is. It is very scary because you, you know, when you work for somebody else, you got a mortgage, you got a car, you got insurance. You know, you have the those those basic things. You have the same thing when you own a business. It's just way more expensive. Right? <laughs> <laughs> that bank account dips much faster, right? Right, right. <laughs> and you have to hustle and work your ass off. Nothing, nothing is given. Like nothing, you know. And and uh, and nothing can be taken for granted either. Because yeah, there's there's no there's no there's no easy path. Um, someone might come along and say it was easy for me, and I would say you know what? Fantastic. Like I'm you, that you had that exception. Fantastic. Roll with that. Um, but I, quite frankly, the last, uh, since we opened this place, I've dealt with, uh, um, well, we had mother nature come in. We had mother nature come in. Mother nature came in at the back end of a, what was supposed to be turnkey, um, operating system that turned into three weeks of chaos and not turnkey and almost brought the business to a halt uh and so recovered from that back up you know and then and then the ice storm hits and um that just kind of yeah that 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 shut us down for some weeks again as well so we haven't we haven't been able to have a full ramp up uh even in this building yet quite frankly um you know we did we did lose a couple of customers that were supposed to move in in the middle of March because of the state that the building was in and the state of being able to bring in employees when there's no restroom. Well, so I can't add to the business, but I've already got clients in here. And, right. you know, uh, I think at one point my son asked me, well, dad, you know, what do you do? And I was like, what do you mean? What do I do? We, we, this is, we do what we do. We move on to the next step. Like, there's nothing to do but move forward. There is no, it's not an option, you know? And, yeah. and, and I've had people ask me, say, okay, well, like, do you ever have like a bailout point where you say, oh, it's ever like this or this? And my answer to that is that, no, I don't. <laughs> um, you know, if it gets to a point where I can't pay the bills, then I'll know that it's time to walk away from it. Um, but like, and I'm not saying we're like in a, <laughs> right. I, I should rephrase that. So it doesn't, but like I'm saying, when you look at it, you, there is no predefined. Well, if I haven't done X by this time, I'm going to bail out because the reality is some people are on a six week sales cycle. Some people are on a three day sales cycle. Um, you know, we have clients that, um, you, well, I guess you asked about overseas. We do have like China inbound clients that have come to us and they're looking at, can you handle it in three days? You know, we have cross dock customers that say, we've got this coming on. Can you react in 24 hours? That's logistics, you know? Right. So as long as there's a roadmap and there's this customer moving in here, this customer moving in here, um, <laughs> it's just a matter of where there's a will, there's a way. And it's a, an extremely trying, uh, right. 100% trying. I, I would say, you know, 
I, I, I can't say that it's the hardest thing I've, one hardest thing I've ever done in my life. I've done Spartan Beast races with a busted ankle. I've, I've climbed 14ers, you know, I've put myself through a lot of trials and tribulations personally in the outdoors and et cetera, but a sustained long period of just, you know, um, it's, it's, it's the hardest thing I've ever done, quite frankly. Uh, but it's also the most rewarding thing I've ever done. So, uh, so I would, I wouldn't, there are things I would change, but I would not, if you asked me, would you still invest knowing what you know now, would you, would you have invested your life savings into this business? 100%, wow. 100%. Yep. So here you are, you've quit your last job. Mm-hmm. You've gone on a few interviews several times. What, how did you start then? What, like take us through I read that a process. Book. Okay. <laughs> I read a book. Uh, I told you I was living my best life during the right. summer and I'm like, oh, okay, cool, whatever. Um, and the only reason that I was interviewing and going to the, and doing those, cause I was like, well, I feel like that's what I'm supposed to be doing. Right? Like I should be doing this cause that's the next step. That's what society says you should do. Like, are you interviewing yet? Have you, do you have a job yet? No, I don't. And, and is that a, is that a problem for you? Or is that like, I don't, you know, right. uh, but, um, so I was, I was doing that and um, I spent a lot of time, honestly, in the pool uh, last, you know, last summer. Um, I'd go for a run mid-morning and uh, over at the park and then come back and uh, jump in the pool and like, uh, again, just living my best life. I, maybe I had like the midlife crisis early or something. Like I got, to, I got to have that summer where you're like, I have enough money that I can support not working. I can't just go wild, but... I'm going to do what I want. I'm going to be me. I'm going right. to climb mountains and, and do all this stuff. So uh, for my for my birthday last year, two of our friends, uh, Patty and Joe, I miss them. They just moved back to Europe. But they, uh, they gave me a book uh, called Outliers by Malcolm Gladwell. And this summer, I was laying in the pool reading that book. And... Um, there's he starts to reference in in multiple parts generational shifts in business and commerce you know in uh, in the economy and he mentions you know how don't quote me on this because i don't know that but you know basically like 64 and 65 when bill gates is coming into into play bill gates had enough understanding of the current technology and enough of a vision to see the future that he could make an impact right then and there. Okay. The people that came five years before him were too set in their ways and couldn't see what was what the future was. Right. The people that came five years after him, we don't know who any of them are because that was he, you know, he he prompted that. And so I'm reading that and I'm thinking, I'm not Bill Gates and I don't and I like I'll never be Bill Gates or be Bezos or you know any of those guys. But the reality is this is a generational shift. The pandemic has caused a generational shift. And what is my passion and my expertise? The business development and the fulfillment, building global uh, third-party logistic networks to impact the customer's bottom line, their, their end users' experience, et cetera. And I said, okay, so why, why am I interviewing then to go do this for one person and, and do what they you know, like, that's great. I can go make six figures and make good money and, and, and have, you know, three weeks of vacation a year and all that, but I'm still doing it how somebody else wants me to do it instead of right. being able to say, sure, we can, we can provide that solution. Uh, let's figure it out. Come on board. Um, that's what I love. And so I looked at that and I said, okay, I'm interviewing because I'm scared to take that, that step forward. Right. Um, and it took me a good four or five weeks of being a nervous wreck, going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. I remember, and then when I just said, this is what I'm doing, you know, yeah. like, this is what I'm doing. Um, a huge weight was lifted, and then I wrote a check for two months of, a, uh, of rent and a security deposit to the landlord, and it became real very real at that this point. This place? Yes. Okay. Yes, right. uh, to the property management company. And I was like, okay, it's real now. And uh, went from there. It was so, a, okay, decision has been made. We move forward. That's, when you that's did really, that, did you have all this planned out already then? Or is it just, here's the check and that's your commitment right there? Oh, you know, I, I, I formed the LLC like in June. Mm-hmm. Um, and I had done a little bit of 
prep work um, as far as uh, some illegal things, but it wasn't really until we could get into the business, like into the building that we could start, you know, designing layouts, doing all, 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 the, all that type of stuff. Um, so no, um, I, I, I had, I had the, I had the general strategic idea of what we needed to do, but no, this is, this has been a, um, we, we took possession of the building end of September. Um, I came in and spent two weeks repainting and cleaning, um, opened the doors middle of October. And since then it's been, uh, just move forward, uh, keep on moving forward. And it's been, you know, I, <laughs> my, my, my buddy Aaron, he, um, this guy, I, I call him eight o'clock at night. Hey man, hate to do this to you again. Um, are you free tomorrow? What for? Um, I got a really good deal on all the racking out of the Best Buy that just closed down. Okay. It's going to cost me half of what I would if I was going to get it elsewhere, but I need to go load it on a truck and, and then come over here. So can you come help me uh, load up 12 foot steel beams and all that type of stuff? Right. He right. said, cool. What time do I need to be there? You know, uh, and, and from that to uh, managing projects, you know, and we've got a five day lock project where we've got 35 pallets of these things rolling through and we're doing QC and kitting and retail labeling and all that stuff. Um, Hey man, I got this big thing coming up tomorrow. Are you, are you available? Sure. What time you need me? Um, there's, there's been, there's been people through this process that I, I can only, you know, having the love for the outdoors and the backpacking and the trekking and, you know, people that, people that do like the PCT and the Appalachian trail, et cetera, they refer to along the trail, just randomly, there'll be a guy who's popped up and he's got cold, you know, uh, cold Pepsi and, uh, and Snickers, and he's handing them to these people that doing the, 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 the hikes, and they call them trail angels, right? Um, there have been business angels for me that I wow. just kind of out of nowhere, um, hey, you know what? I know you're an expert in this. Is there, uh, I, I'm not sure exactly which step to take. I've done all of this. What do you think? Actually, let me refer you to this person and then blah, 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 and you meet with them and they say, oh, you were referred by her. Um, we're going to go ahead and give you their you know, their terms and conditions. Right. Oh, wow. That's, you know, that's fantastic. Or, or, you know, the network that I've built and the relationships I've built in the past with, you know, with UPS, mm-hmm. I'm trying to get something kind of pushed through because I have the big company mentality, but they're looking at, well, you're, you're, you're a, you're a new company, so you're a small company. And I'm trying to get these services put in being able to call and say, Hey, can you help out with this? And here's the contact 10 minutes later, where, you know, there, there have been people that just out of nowhere, you don't, you, you know, um, there, one woman at DHL, um, when I brought on my first, you know, sales team, they were, they were in there. She said, Matt, uh, I'll tell you what, why don't you set up a, a you know, a Zoom call? And um, because these guys were all, uh, you know, located, uh, they want you to set up a Zoom call and I'll come in and give them a, uh, a sales training for an hour on how to sell e your product. No, no questions to ask, no asking for anything, just a, you know what, we believe in you and we want to see you succeed. And, and it's, it's been really awesome to meet some really cool, like-minded people that have the same mentality. I'm not doing this because I want something from you. I'm doing this because I see that I can help you. And, and you know what, as humanity, we should just say, let me help you. We should hold the door for each other. We should, you know, like, hey, bless you when you sneeze like we've gotten so far away from that I'll, I'll, I'll get it but like it's been really amazing because you can you can feel like you are on an island you can go home to family you can text with friends you can but unless you have gone through starting a, a business like this you, you really can't put it into words to describe. Like people say, you know, it's the toughest thing, et cetera. And, and like, we could sit here and go on for hours for the things and, and the context of how they happened and everything else. So it's very easy to feel like you're just on an island and you're just sitting here and you're, you're banging your head against a wall because the people at Frontier, they don't give a shit. Like you've called six times over the past two days, your internet still isn't working, whatever, okay. You know, like you, you have those moments where no internet. We can't process orders. We are a 3PL like right. customer. We can't do this through our virtual WMS. Oh, well, 
it'll be per- turned on. You know, you know, like Canon technical support. God, I'll never buy a Canon ever <laughs> again, ever, because none of them do it the same. Uh, it's always, Canon. and they don't have the callback, okay? <laughs> they don't do, so they hold you hostage. So as a business owner, you're already pissed off, right? That what this guy did last time, broke again, all you want to do is just scan something. You just want to scan a document to your computer, right? Like, so that's all you want to do. And so you call and they're like, well, wait times are longer than normal. Um, but they don't give you an option to call back. You just have, I've called on there. They've been like, uh, your wait time is expected to be three hours. And I sit there with the phone on hold at my desk for three hours, because if they answer and you happen to dig up, go to the restroom, I'm oh, sorry, you lost your place in line. So Canon, please don't leave a comment. <laughs> And, but that goes back to my comments you, about Canon have already been left on bestbuy.com. <laughs> but that goes back to you saying you're, you're by yourself. Mm. You have to just go forward and deal yeah. with it. Right. There, so. there are so many things that, you know, as a director and a GM and roles previously, um, it was my job to strategically create and make sure that these things happened. Right. But the details of this API integration to uh, this or um, I, look, tech is not my, I understand all those concepts, right? What I had previously was, hey, I need to accomplish this, 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 and this. I need you to find the, 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 the correct hardware to do it. And then the developers are going to write it. We're going to test it, etc. I don't have those people here. So like right. just standard tech support is one of those, like you just get kicked kicked in the teeth, man. You're just, yeah. And, and, and you learn how well some people's tech support truly is. Um, yep. but no, you, you truly are the janitor and the CEO when you start something like this. Right. And, uh, the reality is you have people here, but at the end of the day, you can invite them into the culture. They can be part of the culture, but nobody's going to care about your business as much as you do. That's right. the reality of it. So when it comes down to it, if it's a, Okay, well, everybody's gone for the day. I don't like the state of the restrooms. Guess what? I'm cleaning the restrooms. Yep. You know, if it's 1030 at night and I'm finishing up a project and I see we've got these orders in here, late night drop off, I can still get it there by midnight. Okay, screw it. Let me get this customer's orders out, drop them off on the way home. If it can be done today, let's just do it today and move forward. Because when you start, I'm a list person, right? But when you have four lists, that means that there's too much going on and you can't put any more on it. You just got to start knocking things out right. and one thing after another, after another. And so, uh, that's, that's really just what it is. It's just the next thing after the next, but it can be very frustrating dealing with tech support people and you ask a question and they respond in their language. Uh, and then you reply back and then you get a one sentence response and then you reply back. And then two days later you get another one sentence response. And finally you say, please, Take a screenshot, put an arrow, tell me what needs to be done, right? <laughs> so finally these people learned if I, if I reach out, they reply back and they say, oh, here's what the issue is, here's how you fix it. Great, you're never gonna hear from me again about this issue. Teach me what the root cause is and the solution. You're never gonna hear from me again because I can identify the root cause, identify the error, and I can implement the solution and we move forward. We're right. self-sustaining. But when you give me the stupid ass one sentence, right? Like I can't deal with that. It just <laughs> <laughs> like, like time as an entrepreneur, time is their most precious commodity. Yep. 100%. People can say you can run out of money. You can run out of food. You can run out of all this type of stuff. Right. But you can replenish all of those. You can't get time back when yep. it comes down to it. When you tell somebody, I will have this to you by the time I leave the office today, if it's 11 o'clock and you haven't left the office yet and you haven't sent it out, you still have to get it done. And that just means that you're cutting into your five hours of sleep that night. It is what it is, but Time is the most precious commodity and you have to manage your commitments to make sure that you don't overcommit because you, you like, you just, you can't make time up. Well, you know? yeah, <laughs> like I mean, that's the reality for me. I wish I would have started all this mm -hmm. years ago. Yeah. Right. I wasted all that time. Yeah. Right. So you are putting all this together, working, grinding. Let me ask you a question. When did you get your first real customer? Uh -huh. And when did you get your first real customer that wasn't a referral? They just showed up out of the blue because they saw you. Somewhere. The first, well, actually, yeah. the first customer was out of the blue. And oh. I had to ask them, 
if you don't mind, can you tell me how you found us, right? right? Like we've been open two weeks and you found us. Well, it was kind of hard. I just left it to my husband who, you know, uh, cause I couldn't, I was, she was looking for somebody local. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, if you're not putting in the right keywords or whatever it can be, or you can get 500 listings because those guys pay for Google ads, but they're in Milwaukee and, and right. they don't know what's going on, you know? So, um, her husband actually you was using keywords and, 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 and found us. And so our first customer was actually that first. Um, How did it feel? Oh, it was amazing. Like okay. that, that day was cloud nine. It truly was. It, and it still is honestly, like it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it's a new cross dock customer and mm -hmm. I, and it's going to be 15 bucks a pallet for 10 pallets to cross dock. And we might never see them again, but you know what? Like it's still, again, that it's not the same thing every day here. It's never the same thing every day. And that can be good and that can be bad. Right. right. Uh, the core processes are always the same, but there's always, you know, this driver shows up late, this driver shows up early. Oh shit. We gotta, you know, like there's always those variables that come into play. So, um, no, our first customer was, was that one. Um, the first, our first, I would say our first real fulfillment customer was one that I got very far with. Um, and they brought somebody new in to help, you know, uh, I guess, um, consolidate things. Like it was, they were a company that had grown tremendously. Mm -hmm. And when you do that really quickly, you can, you can definitely just, you're, you're trying to keep up with it. Right. So, so they brought this gentleman in and it kind of died for a couple months. And then, uh, about two months later, uh, he, he, I get the email saying, Hey, can we, you know, can we talk? And I call him and I was like, these, you know, they're probably going to be shopping me or something, or you know, like, what else, you know, they've already, they've kind of go already. And, and it was a, Hey, you know what? Um, we went through X, Y, and Z and, and we've decided that we want to partner with you and can you move us in? Um, and that was a, that was a fantastic feeling. Um, because at that point it was one that, uh, it, it, I, I don't want to say it didn't, it, it wasn't one that got away, you know, but it was a like, um, it was a sales cycle. And then that's when I learned that all sales cycles don't end with yes or no or anything. Sometimes they just kind of, uh, 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 okay. You know, sometimes they just ghost you. I, right. I, I, I've had people that we trade rates. We have, you know, like they're literally, Hey, can you send me the updated proposal? Uh, you know, we general service agreement, all that stuff. And then all of a sudden it just, they just disappear. I'm like, right. Is it something I said? Is it, you know, do it <laughs> like what's, what's going on here. Right. And, and then I'm like, if I follow up, am I that stalker? Am I that needy stalker? Like you're going through all this in your head. Like, I don't want to seem desperate cause I'm not desperate, but people get busy. So I want to throw it to the top of their email, but you know, you know, like, because I've been on this, on the other side of this for 10 years, I know what it's like when you get that cold email from people right. and you're like, I'm not even giving you the time because quite frankly, you're telling me you can do X, Y, and Z. You don't know anything about my business. How are you going to do anything for my business? Cold call, go, you know, you know, I'm like, okay, you know, so you're playing that game and I just, uh, I give it three, honestly. Like if, if for some reason we get far along in it and it just, all of a sudden they ghost, it's, mm -hmm. you know, I'll reach out about a week later, I'll reach out again. Then two weeks later, I'll reach out and say, you know, Hey, if you have any questions, we're here. You know, I, I don't know if, like to me, here's my thing. Knowledge is always free. Conversation is always free. You know, if you're just trying to figure out what your next steps are with logistics, call me and we'll talk about it. And I might not be the guy for you, but I might be able to refer you to the right person that can help you with this transportation hub or this lane or this package or this market or whatever it may be. Um, to me, it's just about, it's, it's, I'm not going to charge you for a conversation on the phone. Right. So right. Th that's what I always like, Hey, you know what? I'm here. If you need us, give me a call, like whatever. Cause I enjoy talking to you. If there's anything you want a different perspective, whatever it may be, just keep the relationship open. Um, and then others are truly that, that fast, like sales cycle. There was one where it was kind of, I came in late in the game um, because of a certain, you know, aspect of my warehouse that others didn't have. And then we spoke and then it was, it was very quick. And then a week later it was their pre-shipment was in and it was, let's get rolling, you know, and, and they're, we're shipping worldwide for them, you know? Um, and so it's, you, you never know like what's around the corner. And so you just keep on moving, you keep on pushing and you learn that once again, maybe it just wasn't a good fit. That doesn't mean that you suck. That doesn't mean that they suck. That just means that you keep on rolling. Um, 
but every customer is different. So right. everyone can just be that, that fun aspect of, okay, what is your pinch point? Cause these people don't have that pinch point. How did they address it? Oh, well, my other customer addressed it this way. Um, so let's try this or let's try this. So as, as more customers come on and co-mingle within our, you know, they never talk to each other. They don't, they, they know about each other, but they don't know who they are, et cetera. But they're actually getting benefiting from the other customers as well, because we're looking at what solutions we implemented here or even, Hey, when you guys had to do that on your Shopify store, um, we didn't help with that, but how did you do that? Take that knowledge, pass it on to here. You know, that, that, that's what it's about is providing that. So, so what is a day at Treka Logistics like for oh, you? Geez. Like from when you come in, we leave at night. <laughs> you know, honestly, most days it's one of those things that I, I remember going home like a week ago <laughs> and <laughs> they were like, uh, who, sorry, I don't remember who I was talking to. I think I was texting and, and I said, oh, well, this happened, this happened, this happened. Oh, well, what? I, I, I don't know. I don't remember what happened two hours ago. I just know that something good happened as well, like on top of that, because it's just, it's constant. I'm trying to think who that, the, like the context that you can edit all that out. It doesn't really matter. It's a, uh, but like, that's, that's what my days really are is um, I try to get as much done before I leave okay. because I look at it and say, if I leave at 10 or 11 o'clock at night and there's 10 orders that came in over the last hour from overseas because those people are awake while we're asleep mm -hmm. and I can get those out tonight. I should do that because I don't know what tomorrow looks like. Um, some days it is, um, just a, a, a straightforward, as far as the warehouse operation, a straightforward e-com flowing through Shopify, you know, some portals other days it is, customer portals blowing up and 20, you know, each one of them is 20 master cartons that we're repacking and shipping off to here or to this distributor or this LTL. So um, to me, it's a, I come in with a general idea of this has to be done by the time I leave today, knowing that there's throughout the day going to be, you know, I could be in the middle of this and I get a phone call of somebody wanting our services. I've got to divert from this mentality to business development salesman owner, right? Like, and have that conversation. And then, you know, I'm dealing with uh, from the financial aspect. I, I will say one thing that I did that I never regret and I'm very glad I did it is, um, you know, I started out and, and I had QuickBooks and I'm like, I've taken the college accounting classes. I understand debits, credits, et cetera. I need somebody to help me with the tax implications, but I can probably, and then I was like, this is not my forte. Can I do it? Sure. But I don't feel comfortable with that. It's being done to my level of expertise. And, um, you know, the hunter at Welk partners, this guy, uh, that guy's phenomenal. Fr uh, frankly, he's, he's fractional CFO. Um, all the AR, all the AP, when we were implementing NetSuite. Um, quite frankly, he almost drove that for me. And, and I don't feel like I don't, that implementation, the details of it, the financial side of it, the migrations, all of that stuff, um, you know, that guy, I can count on him again. And, and, and again, he's one of those people that just, it was a random on LinkedIn, Happened to see I had started a business. They reach out. I'm like, hey, man, I might actually be in. Let's talk a little bit. And he's become part of the Treka Logistics ecosystem. He's got it. He's another small business owner, right? Like right. it's and it's so it's it, these guys at Grow, this guy Summit at Grow, extremely driven. That's the name of his company is Grow. Um, extremely driven. Same thing. Uh, small business owner, same type of age. But, you know, we, we, we all interact with each other the same way, support each other the same way. 30 minutes before you guys got here today, Summer was calling saying, hey man, so what's going on with these guys? How are these leads going? And, and just checking in with each other. And, you know, uh, you know, Hunter, when I was meeting with, with Summit, he was talking about something, I'm like, not to interfere, but 
this guy might be able to help with some of these things. If you're interested, I can give him your contact information, no harm, no foul, right. whatever. I get an email two weeks later. He's like, this guy is awesome. Like, thanks for the referral, blah, blah, blah. I'm talking to him today and he's talking about, uh, we referred him somewhere else that he got onto. And like, that's, that's the exciting things. It's not only what we're doing here, but again, the impact of, Hey man, let me introduce you to somebody because that's going to help you. And, and, and that building that, that network of not people that you are going to look to, to use their services, but look to, to, uh, on the same level, just converse with, and, and you know, you're all going through the same thing. You're all dealing with the same thing. So, um, like it's been really cool and really supportive to meet, you know, those people and to see sometimes that I get responses at 10 or 11 o'clock at night. I'm not the only one doing that, you know, to hear, you know, these, these, these type of things and to have, uh, they didn't, have people be passionate about their business and how they're impacting their services impact our business and and that mutual just respect and and passion for making each other better people you, you know like it is really like this is this is our i have a platform to make the world better in whatever way that i can you know from even at, we're a UPS carbon neutral shipper, right? Like that might seem small and insignificant to people and in in the grand scheme of things the metric tons of carbon that we're offsetting are nothing compared to initiatives that other people are doing. But if we as a company can say, yes, we believe in that, and we're a UPS carbon neutral shipper, which means that a percentage of every order that you ship, um, a percentage of that goes to projects that uh, UPS invests in for planting trees and sustainability and negating the impact of that carbon, then yes, we're going to do that. We're going to believe in that you know right. and and in the fall like the trek of 20 uh will be uh a trail race and everybody's like oh, 20k that's too there'll be a 5k and a 10k <laughs> and a 20k option for everybody but so like, where's this gonna happen now uh it'll happen here in dfw okay yeah right. but the the, the trek of 20, 20 trail race 5k race and all the proceeds go to wounded warrior warrior because i, I want I want to be able to give back to Wounded Warrior and mm -hmm. help with the veterans dealing with depression and let them know that they're not alone. There's people they can call. Like the, the, the world has gotten so crazy with the pandemic and everybody being so isolated and getting their news and their opinions and everything from quick little snippets that, you know, it, they, they, a lot of times they don't challenge things. They just want to be heard. They, they want to, instead of stopping and stepping back and saying, wait, where did this come from? Let me think about it. How can I help? Right? right. And I think that people just go down these paths and think that there's no way out of it. This is my life. This is where I'm stuck. There's no way out of it. And you know, like that's something I'm passionate about as an ex, ex service member. And, uh, is that, you know, wounded warrior, um, and, and specifically helping with veterans, um, and, and, helping with PTSD and dealing with depression and anxiety coming back from those, you know, so, but that gives me that platform to do it. Trekka Logistics gives me that platform to say, awesome, we're impacting here, but philanthropically, these are things I believe in. And oh, by the way, I love trail races and Spartan races and these type of things. So combining all of my loves and passions to impact the world in any way that I can. That's what this business does for me, you know, from a business perspective, from a parent perspective, from a husband and, and wife perspective, from a, like all of them, it really forces you to determine who you are because, you know, this is when, when you are in this, it strips you down to who you are and you find out who you are. And, you know, it just, it, uh, there's no, there's no room for the clutter or the static, wow. right? So, yeah. Wow. Well, I think that's a great stopping point. Awesome. Um, awesome. Thank you so much for doing this. Thanks um, for having me. This is fantastic. This has been fun. My, I got my first podcast out of the way. We're great, right? Sweet. <laughs> I know, man. You're one of us now. So Awesome. But awesome. we got to have you back. And we'll do this again. I'd love to be back. And yes. we'll see where you are then. Yes. And uh, like I said, I'm, I'm so proud of you, man. Great. Um, Thanks, man. I appreciate and, it. And best of luck. So. Thank you. Great right. seeing you guys, too. Again. Thanks, Matt. Awesome.